Hey everyone, today we're continuing on with our multi-language monorepo. So far we've used general to generate some files, we've used py library, py test and py binary to create a python library and a python web application using flask. Today we're going to continue on with that and we're going to bring golang into the monorepo. So firstly we need to use rules go and we're also going to be using something called gazelle which is used for generating build files and is also very useful for managing dependencies. So over here, we could use rules go and follow their setup, but I think the better way to go is actually to follow the gazelle setup because it also includes setting up rules go and bringing that in. So here you can see we have this um, really nice section here where we can just copy this whole thing. It's going to bring in rules go it's going to bring in gazelle and it also just has some has everything here that we need so we're just going to put a comment here which is going to be go just to keep this file nice and organized and we're going to paste that in so there's one thing that we need to change here it's this gazelle dependencies and this is because we're going to include all of our dependencies here there is an extra step that we need and it's this. So we basically need to define our Go repository default config and we're going to replace this to include um, this default config, which is our workspace.bazel. All right, so now that we're bringing that in, if I was to do a bazel build, we can see it's not actually um, going to bring any of this in yet because we haven't actually used it yet. So first of all, we're going to create our Go library. So I'm going to create a new folder and let's just call it uh, Go Hello World. While we're here, I guess we could also create our other folder, which is going to be called Go Web. In both of these, we're going to need, um, where am I? projects go hello world so we need to have a build .bazel file and we're also going to have a build .bazel file in our go web so that's our two build .bazel files and now we're ready to start writing our um, actual application so let's start off with the the library so go hello world, we're going to have just a hello world.go and we're also going to have a hello world test.go. So this isn't a go tutorial, so I'm going to be copying and pasting some file, some code in really. So first of all, starting with our hello world.go, it's just a really simple um, public function here that just returns the string hello world so that's that we then have our test so same thing we have package go hello world we're important testing we have this expected string and we have the actual whenever we call our public method and we're just checking if the actual is the expected and that will give us that so now we need to define our go library and our go test. So first of all, we need to import these things. So I'm hoping that we have some sort of a load function here that's gonna show us that. So here we can see this is what we need. So we can actually bring in this entire thing. Let's go. So go library, we can remove that. We're also going to need go test. So for the library name, we're going to name it the same thing as the package because this is going to give us a default target and the sources is just going to be hello world.go import path. So this is going to need to be the entire um, name of the project. So let's go Chris. Foster multi 
language on a repo project and this is in go hello world this is important because any package that uses this library in the monorepo will be importing from this and let's keep the visibility public for now so now if i do a bazel build let's see if it builds successfully so now you can see it's actually um pulling the things in that we need and it's it's all working so that's the library finished and we're able to build it so now let's see if they have an example of go test so it's not going to be in gazelle it's going to be here go test so we have embed we have sources let's copy this in so we're not going to have any depths we're going to have we're going to embed our go hello world library because that's what we're testing if we go back to the hello world test um you can see that we're testing hello world so we need to embed that so that's okay the sources section here it's actually the sources of our test files so this is going to be hello world test.go and let's just name it go hello world test for consistency so let's do another build so something failed expected package so maybe i didn't save that yet okay so it's building successfully if I test now, if I test everything, we should now see the test target. And it's there, go hello world test. So if I was to change this to return something like that, the test should fail. It, it does, it fails. I can bring it back. And same as before, if I keep running this, the test is actually cached now. So unless I change something in the test file or the the library itself then that test is going to be cached which is nice so now we want to build our web application and the web application is going to utilize this library so inside go web we're going to create one file called main.go and this is going to be the entry point and same as before i'm just going to paste this in so it's it's not doing too much interest in here if we go over to gorilla mux we can see an example. So if we look up HTTP listen and serve, there's an example of um, of this here. So we basically are writing one endpoint and we have a handler for that and that's pretty much what we're doing. There's one thing that's kind of um, to note here. So we're importing Gorilla Mux and we're also importing our own library here. And outside of that, this is just some simple Go code. So now to actually write the build file for this. So let's just copy this because we need to load Go binary this time. And Go binary, we're actually able to run that. It's an executable. So we don't need Go library. Go binary is all we need. So let's write our target now. So we have Go binary, name, same as before, we're going to name it um, go web because this is the same as the package. So this will be a default target. And we're gonna have some sources. The sources are just gonna be main.go. So just this one file is the source. And now probably the most important part here is the depth. So the first depth that we need is our actual internal library, which is projects go hello world and that is going to allow us to import this here if we didn't provide this depth this package would know nothing about that so the second dependency that we need now is obviously gorilla mux because we're also importing that so where do we define our dependencies there's a couple of different ways to do this but the most straightforward is to 
just to find them here in the workspace. And that's why we need to do this. So we're going to use the um, Go repository for this. So they have an example here. Let's copy this in. We're already bringing Go repository in, so that's good. So a few different things here that we need to consider. So first of all, we need to update some stuff. So this here, um, the name, this can be anything we want, but there's some good conventions we can use here. So we can see here that first of all, this is org underscore Golang. So this is obviously the reverse of the domain and we're replacing the dots with underscores. So for Gorilla Mux, um, it's under github.com, Gorilla Mux. So if we look here, install, uh, we can first of all copy this because this is going to be our import path. And then we can use this. So we can do com underscore github underscore gorilla underscore mux. So that's that. We can then um, define what version we want to use. You can use summon version, which is probably the best way to go for production um, because you're able to verify the the checksum, but for simplicity, we're just going to, I think you can use a tag and we're able to use just a tag from this. So v1.8.0, like that. So we've now defined this dependency and we can actually do something like bazel query and we can query for all of the targets underneath this, and this will give us an idea of what we may need to use. So we can see we have go default library, mux, and mux test. We're going to need to use mux, so if we copy that, we can paste this in as a dependency there. So I think that's all working. So here we're, we're using the name, which is coming from this and we're using the mux target of that. So let's try a Bazel build and see if it builds successfully. Trailing comma is only allowed in parentheses tuples. So I actually didn't know that you couldn't do that. That's interesting. Can we not? Depths is not defined. Well, okay, so that was a mistake. Maybe I can have a trailing comma. Yep, it looks to be building now. Build not complete successfully. Check that imports in Go sources match import path attributes in depths. So it is possible that I made a mistake here, Christy Foster. Let's compare this with the import path of our library. So go on here. Let's just see if these are actually different language. Oh, so that was the mistake. So the repository is actually called multi-language Bazel monorepo. So the import paths didn't match. And I need a comma. So now it's building successfully. If I was to do a Bazel test, let's just see the test still pass. And Bazel build, everything builds. So now I should be able to do Bazel run projects and it's under go web. And because this is the target is called go web, the same as the package, we don't actually need to define the target here. So we could do this or we could also do this and omit the, the target name. So you can see we have this um, log line going to listen and port. A thousand. If we go here, we can see that we're logging that out just before we start listening. So if I go over here and I go to localhost a thousand, then we get our web application is returning that. Nice. And we also have a log that anytime we get a request, we print that out. 
So I didn't want to go over the Go code too much because in the end this is a Bazel tutorial and we wanted to get set up with Go library, Go test and Go binary and we've been able to do that. So our multi-language monorepo is starting to take shape now. We have Python and Go together. I think I'm going to take a uh, attempt at bringing Node.js in next and see how that goes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.